A new effort is being launched today to reverse our reliance on a chemical that's supposed to improve our health, not jeopardize it. We're talking about fluoride, and of course it's something all of us are exposed to every day. iTeam's uh, Roberta Baskin is here with the details on this. Roberta. Well, if public, if public health officials knew then what they know now, would we have fluoride? Would it be added to our drinking water? Well, today a coalition of scientists, dentists, and doctors are taking action to stop fluoridation until it is proven safe. For decades, Americans associated fluoride with good dental hygiene, which is why it's still added to most public water supplies, including many in the Washington area. The American Dental Association calls fluoridation one of the best public health ideas ever. Absolutely, fluoride is safe, um, it's effective, it has reduced the decay rate in the population by about 20 to 40 percent over the last 60 years. But today, 600 health professionals and scientists, including Dr. Arvid Carlson, a Nobel laureate of medicine, are calling on Congress to ban the use of fluoride immediately. Among the petitioners, Bob Carton, a former Environmental Protection Agency scientist. He says fluoridating water was a mistake from the beginning. It was a foolish thing to do years ago. They didn't have enough information. They hadn't really been tested. In fact, a 2005 Centers for Disease Control study found too much fluoride has caused irreversibly discolored teeth in one out of three children. And a major report by the National Academy of Sciences says toxic levels can lead to severe permanent pitting of the enamel in children. Fluoride can also build up in the bones to cause pain, stiff joints, and skeletal abnormalities when they get older. It's a cumulative poison. It just gradually builds up and it gradually causes harm. But the EPA isn't about to make any quick decisions about the Academy's finding that toxic levels of fluoride must be drastically lowered. We uh, take their recommendations very seriously. We also have a commitment to get additional information and validate it and work with other public health authorities. Last November, concerns over excess fluoride prompted the American Dental Association to warn parents not to mix baby formula with tap water during an infant's first 12 months. So given a, a, an infant's small weight, certainly we, we've put um, recommendations out there for mothers. And for years, the Food and Drug Administration has required warning labels to keep toothpaste out of the reach of children under six, and if swallowed, to get medical help or contact a poison control center right away. In 2005, more than 22,000 people did. Too much of any good thing can be a bad thing. Still, the American Dental Association insists fluoride is crucial for preventing tooth decay. We prevent a lot of suffering and pain that's totally unnecessary and preventable, both in adults and children. The EPA, the FDA, CDC, ADA, and other combinations of the alphabet have argued the safety of fluoride for years. Maybe it is time to get all those different views together at a congressional hearing and straighten out all the mixed signals that the public is getting. Meanwhile, fluoride remains. But it seems like what they've got to do first is figure out exactly what the safe level is, because if too much is the problem, what is the right amount? There's no answer to that, and what amount are you getting? Because what dose are you getting? It depends on your body weight and how much water you drink and other things. Hmm. Right. Okay. Very interesting, right. Roberta. Thank you. You've now seen two newscasts from mainstream sources and an independent video from our alternative journalists. Did you notice something? Both mainstream news sources had cleverly watered down their reports to sidestep the critical parts you saw in the alternative video simply by omitting these other concerns as if they were non-existent. The first report, Fox News, 
concentrated on a possibility of fluoride being a potential cancer risk for young boys, and not much more than that. The report you just finished seeing made mention of how scientists, dentists, and doctors are only, quote, taking action to stop fluoridation until it is proven safe, unquote, making it sound as though their only concern is that it just hasn't been approved enough yet or something. And they present their case as being just brief concerns about discolored teeth and bone pain in later years, and not much more than that. Why did they not show the neurological concerns that were in the other video? Neither so-called news reports mentioned the very serious neurological damages being discovered by thousands of medical professionals today. Why not? Think for yourself. The mainstream, are they doing their best to educate us? Or are they doing their very best to keep us in the dark and keep us dumbed down? Could they be under higher suggestion to keep us this distracted? Remember how the ADA specialist was giving new mothers recommendations? How much fluoride should you give your child, an infant child? I would think none. Look at these. They want to get them right out of the womb now. Getting them while they're young, brushing their teeth was one thing. But now? Some of us might be questioning this whole scenario, saying, this just seems so far-fetched. How could this be happening here in America? Well, it's not just in America. 